Walker. Or whatever was in your grandma's like, sewing grandma's basket. Staff yeah. That was so old. Like, <laughs> rub the fuzzies off it before you put it in. <laughs> welcome to Joyful and Merry Quilting. I am Mary, and I am here to welcome you to this week's podcast, Quilt Talk. So we're excited to have you join us. I am here with my dear friend, Patty Gregory. She is the president and CEO of Project Linus. And we are at our Project Linus retreat this week. So we are wearing our uniform because that's required. And and we are having a wonderful time, but I still wanted to have our podcast this week. So I invited Patty to join me and she graciously said that she would. So we are going to talk about quilts because that's what we do and that's what we've been doing we've been doing this ever since we got here and uh we've joined with the other board members who are also quilters it's not really a requirement but it kind of just worked out that way so we're excited that we can share all the tips and tricks and we've got some to share with you here that that we've talked about before some great things that i think every single time we get together we learn something new i mean look at how many we learn so much from each other we do and we all search out quilting tips and things that are helpful but sometimes when we just see it hands-on it makes a huge difference for us to be able to put that practice into into real life so that's what we're going to show you here a little bit. We've got a couple of announcements before we get started. First of all, we had a great night owl quilting and the board was all able to join us. So if you haven't watched it, you have to. You can meet the board of directors at the very beginning of the live session that we had our night owl hangout. And if you go to the YouTube channel, Joyful Mary YouTube channel that you're on right now and click on the little live tab, there's a live tab, then it'll take you to our live broadcast and you can just watch whatever you want. Alex has it all separated into chapters And if you can, uh, if there's something that you're interested in, what we did was after we had the interview and we all kind of chatted a little bit, showed our stuff and what we were working on, then we had our tutorial that I did. It was the the third, yeah, the third pattern of our five pattern favors. And it was actually our, we called it our back bliss lumbar pillow. And this is it. We made this, it's very quick. It goes together in a snap. The pattern is still available for free on the Joyful and Merry Quilting website. You just have to go Joyful and Merry Quilting slash owl and you'll get the pattern to do this. Then you can go to the live and I walked you through all the steps. We had a little glitch as always, you know how the internet is. And well, it wasn't internet, it was user error. (laughs) That's usually what happens is user error and it was me and I was the user and I made a big error. But what I did was I hit my microphone and it knocked the knocked the cord out. And so the very end, I'm kind of doing hand motions and, and holding up papers. So it's quite comical. And if you're interested in that, you can take a look. Really, truly was comical the whole entire, <laughs> yeah. this whole week has been comical. It has been. And everybody's personality get together. And then at 10 o'clock at night, you know, when we're all tired, better yet. So please go back and look at that and meet everybody. It was really fun to just, you know, just introduce ourselves. Because a lot of times people, especially on the board, everybody's kind of behind the scenes. You know what? they do you know that they you know have jobs that they do but we don't always get to just see each other and this was an opportunity you know since I am on the board of directors I was able to include everyone in this podcast know that we're real people yeah exactly and even (laughs) though like this is another hat that I wear so this joyful and merry quilting is just me but um everybody else was quite supportive and I and I again I really appreciate that that was really fun so anyway the free pattern make sure you get that I had a great merry moment this week. Other than everybody being here, that was the huge merry moment. But my merry moment, which I don't have in front of me, but I'll just tell you about it, was I got a phone call. We are up in northern Wisconsin. And I got a phone call from the quilt shop. And they had said, you won a prize. Well, I'd been here about a month ago or so. And I filled out a little ticket at So Smart in Rhinelander, Wisconsin. That's the name of the shop. Cute shop. And I filled out the ticket and put it in their little box and I won, but I didn't know what I won. So I went and I won a pack of thread that was this big. I don't know. It was, it was all different colors of the brown hues, which right now fall, we've already used one of the, one of the things um, just sewing downstairs. So anyway, thank you to So Smart. That was so wonderful. I was so excited to get that little prize. Whoever wins anything. And especially when you put your name in the drawing, you never expect to hear back. And I did. So I picked that up and I was super excited about it. As this week has progressed, it's only Wednesday, so we still have the rest of the week. But we were sharing quilting tips on our live, different things that we had and just stuff that we brought. We didn't think it was any big deal. And then we bring it, we show. So Patty had one and I have to show you this. We actually posted the link and Alex will post the link here. 
But tell us about this. This is the coolest thing. And I think it's really important. These are called project pouches. I found mine on Amazon. They have all different sizes. You can color code because the zippers can be all different colors. And they're really good quality. They feel good. They're kind of vinyl, but they have this net uh, mesh embedded in the plastic. So like they're not going to tear. And this is, you can't tell, but this is like super heavy. Super, super heavy. It's big. What did we say it was for size? There, like, this one is like 16 by 12. Yeah. It's big. It's big. But I have everything in here to make these blocks. Oh, show the blocks. She's got to um, show you this. Patty has been working on this. And Patty, like, she's a, a mega quilter. I don't know how to describe you other than being somebody who quilts constantly. Quilt and even though she runs a national nonprofit organization, <laughs> she still gets more done than any of us. But look at this block. Isn't that the prettiest thing? I had paper pieced before. Mm-hmm. Um, but I always got frustrated with it. So I've had my own personal tutor. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so that's what I've been working on. Isn't that but beautiful? Everything everything went in my project bag and I just have. What's the name of the pattern? Someone's um, going to ask. It is 12 Vintage Sunburst Vintage Block Series. I found this at that quarter shop. And it's all the papers. The papers yeah, are already here, there open. for you. You buy the tablet that has all the papers. Isn't that cool? And then you just print it out, or you don't print it out. I mean, no, you just tear them out. You just tear it out, and then you you foundation piece, and there's enough for I don't know what you say, twelve blocks um, or twenty. So I, well, oh, twenty. It, you get ten blocks per pad, and so I bought two. Uh huh. So and it'll make like a, a lap size. Yeah. Quilt when I'm and done. it's so pretty. And you they can have use different all sizes. That. Oh, I same didn't know one, that. Different version. I mean, same version, just oh, different my goodness. size. So these are eight inch and these are twelve inch. So that's Fat Quarter Shop. You can take mm-hmm. a look there if you're interested in those. But uh, everything, pre-made. everything I need to make those is all in this bag, and then I just zip it shut. And I tend to plan ahead. So like I've had this pack for a while, but you know, you just pack everything in your pouches. And at home, I use them in a basket, and I just line them up in the basket, and then I just pull the one I want. You can put labels on the front of them some of them had little pockets where you could like just stick a paper or you could just you know Mm -hmm. tape it on there whatever absolutely what a great idea i love that so i over ordered two sets of what 40 or (laughs) we kept saying mary if you buy two then it's better (laughs) i said yes buy two (laughs) so i did and and i'm excited it will be at my house when i get there but we all had those projects and you know what i was buying was those plastic project boxes that were they're 12 inches and i don't know how high I can't always fit. I was going to say, like, those pads would not have fit in there. It wouldn't. And stacking them up, they take up a ton of room. Where this really looks like something that you can Mm -mm. basically put anywhere on a shelf. And I stand them up and and line them up. I think it's a great idea. And they make, when you're traveling with your sewing machine, you can pack these in around your sewing machine. There you go. And your sewing machine doesn't move. And they do come in the smaller ones. So Mm -hmm. you can use them for that. But then you can use them, say, sometimes you do a smaller pack and you want to keep everything for that particular stacked up squares. This is where we need Jane, who Jane, who is on our board of directors, and she's sitting over the corner and she's not she's She's not joining us here. But (laughs) she had a stack of what were those squares, Jane? How big were those? She had inch and a half squares and they were all lined up beautifully. They would fit nicely into a packet. One of the small ones. Yeah, Yeah. one of the small packets. So I think that, you know, they're so versatile. And we're not advertising for them because, you know, we don't even know who makes them. We don't know who makes them. (laughs) But we know that they're a good thing. So we're really excited to share that with you. So that's one thing. Then we have these pins. Somebody, and I apologize, I don't remember who suggested them to me. They're called magic pins. And I, you know, I use the clover pins, the, the very sharp, fine clover pins, and I love them. But she suggested these. I don't know how fine these are, but they really work well. Yeah, look at that. You can kind of see they have a head on them that is flat that you can use for foundation piecing, but they're not, yeah, they're not thick. Sometimes the flathead pins are very thick and it's hard to go through. They're so thin you can't see them. Yeah, they really, yeah, you can see them. You can see a little bit of the light, yeah. So, yeah, there we go. That's perfect. And so you can see they're very thin, but they went into the paper so nicely. The one, just the generic flower heads that I had, they they work well too. But this was so easy and they didn't bend. So anyway, I was really impressed with these. They come in several sizes. And, and they're I, just as sharp as the other ones. They I really think. were. I think so too. And yeah. you know, the other ones, they, they stab you pretty easy. They're very sharp, but I, I, I like these. So just kind of a suggestion. If you're looking for pins, you don't have to go out and buy them or anything. But if you're looking, these magic pins um, are available all over the place. Local quilt shops, I'm sure, have them. Mm -hmm. If not, they could probably order them for you, and then they probably have them on Amazon or whatever. We've all been sticking ourselves with Mary's very sharp (laughs) clover pins. And the pin cushion is all part of it. You know, Mm -hmm. when you have the magnets that are really strong, 
And that's where we've been using the Purple Hobbies yeah, cup, the pin cup because they really do hold it. So if you're not familiar with that, there's another video that talks mm-hmm. about that pin cup. Okay, the other thing that I wanted to share was at our night owl quilting, as I said, you know, we made the pillow, but we also made previously the candle cozy, which is it holds up to a three inch candle. And the pattern is in our store because the pattern is only available for free until the next one comes out. But this is so cute and it works. You can put a glass in there. You can put an ornament in there if it's a Christmas one, depending on your fabric. I put a three inch battery operated candle and it looked real. So anyway, this is one. Then the hexagon pot holder. Okay, you guys, you know that this this is is something that nearly destroyed my mental capabilities because I had so much. It's so easy. I'm telling you, it is so easy and I made it so difficult and it's not. The pattern, once again, is is on our website. Um, If you downloaded the pattern and you had the incorrect measurement um, when it came to printing out your template, please email info at joyfulandmarryquilting.com and we will give you access to the correct template. I am very sorry that that happened. I don't know what was wrong with me. I lost my mind that night and there was an error in the pattern. So if you did not get the corrected copy, this is in our store. We don't want you to have to buy it. We just want to change up that pattern. So you can let us know and we will have that available to you. Okay, the next, since this was done, the next one we're going to do is our luggage tags. And look at, aren't these just so cute? You can put your business card or whatever, turn it over so nobody knows who you are. And you can put it in here. These make such great favors. It went together so easily. You do need some vinyl. I just bought the cheapest vinyl that they had at Hobby Lobby. I think it was a $2.99 a yard or oh, something. No, I don't know. Expensive. Anyway, yeah. So I got that to use. You'll need that with some ribbon. I used an inch wide ribbon. Something sturdy so that when you put it on your luggage, it doesn't get torn off. But the reason that I like these is because my luggage is red, dark red. And I everybody's is. Everybody's comes off the thing, you know, and they all look the same. But when you have a tag hanging on there like this, you see yours, you know that Mm -hmm. that's your piece. So you can make, you know, all different colors and and they make just a great little favor gift. Okay, one last tip is when the sound went out on my computer, I couldn't tell you what I was doing at the end. But what I did when I poked out, a lot of times I'll say use a chopstick and poke the ends out. I don't know if you have, but uh, I've poked Poked through. through. Yeah, Mm -hmm. I've poked through with, and even when I do it carefully, Sometimes I poke a hole, so I was trying to be careful. But what I did was I took my two and a half inch ruler, and when I turned it right side out and I needed to poke out those, I put the two and a half inch ruler in here. And look at that. I mean, that's absolutely perfect. And all I did, there's, this isn't going to poke through. I mean, it, I guess it could if I hit it really hard. If you hard. push it really hard. But I'm line, not, but I'm, yeah. you know, but look at that square point. And I did that with both corners. I don't think you can see it on the video, and I couldn't tell you because I didn't have sound. But anyway, look at that. So all it is to get those corners square is I just use my square ruler. Any ruler would work. This just happened to be the one that I had there. Yeah. So anyway, I also show you how to make your own pillow if you want um, using a cheap pillow. Take a look at the live. That's everything there. So that's it. That's our announcements for today. We have lots that um, we did. But Patty and I were trying to talk about what in the world – um, we used to do ages ago when we didn't have all these fun tools and rulers and pins and everything, you know, quilting way back when. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure those of you can share. So tell us how you got started quilting because Patty's been sewing forever. I have. My grandmother was a master tailor. And so as early as like five years old, they had me embroidering those little pillowcases, you know. And <laughs> I remember my daddy coming home one day from work and he said, oh, great. Now you have my baby pulling strings. and." <laughs> You know, that sort of thing. But when I was eight, they sent me to singer sewing class. And oh. so I made my first garment then. Oh, my gosh. Um, it was a dress, a little sundress. Yeah. Um, and then just I just I just sewed all the time I was growing up. I sewed in home ec and stuff like that. And I made baby blankets for friends oh, and fun. stuff like that. My first real quilt was the first real quilt you ever made. Isn't that weird? The oh, magazine. that's right. You did tell yes. me that. That's right. So, yeah. You made it when the magazine first came out. Uh-huh. I made it years later. Yeah, because Patty's younger than I am. Yeah, thanks, Patty. <laughs> <laughs> years I, later, she found I it at an antique make store. It like that. No, seriously, my grandmother had it, and I was probably in my thirties yeah. when I made this. I mean, I always made baby blankets, uh-huh. but when I was in my thirties, my grandma was like, "Oh, you know, here's this magazine," and I made the exact same quilt yep. that you made. She sent me a picture of it. It was yeah, totally mine the was same. Was in purples, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So, Isn't I that amazing? What magazine it was. It was. 
Yeah, see, we don't remember. Women's Day, I think it was. Yeah, and it was. I there's a, one of the videos, one of the first videos that I did here. There's a log cabin hanging behind me in the picture, and it's the first one I made. But Patty's again, it looked beautiful. You Hers were, was, and you were. Mine your, looked horrible. You it were was, in your teens and. Yeah, I was 30, well, yeah. So it makes a well, and yeah. and when I made it, I made it for my brothers, and I I just you know I didn't yeah. know how to do anything. I just followed. The, I had no sewing instruction. Actually, I had a little bit. I made a. I took a sewing class in the summer when I was in junior high, and it was like everybody in the class knew how to sew except for me. I didn't even know how to turn the machine on. And I made this dress that was awful, and one armhole was bigger than the other one. So the one you could barely fit. It was like biting me under my arm, and it was it was the worst experience. I'm still not a clothes sewer, but I still like sewing. You know, I just yeah, still have fun with it. I don't sew clothes anymore. Yeah, it's hard. Quilting's to, too much fun. It, quilting is way too much fun. So yeah. we were talking about the different things like batting. Okay. Batting has changed. Batting used to be like the stick. Oh, thick. there was and never it was all the polyester. thin stuff. We didn't no. have, we didn't, mm -hmm. cotton batting, we didn't know what that was. No, and I don't think people used cotton. I mean, they I really think they didn't. probably used maybe old blankets and things they would put inside all their quilts old way long ago. Or that really thick polyester. Yeah. Um, oh, it was horrible to quilt. High loft, and, they called it. And yeah. you wanted high loft because we all, <laughs> you wanted you know, puffy quilts. Yeah. They were, yeah. And, and I don't, you know, they were just stretchy and uh, mm -hmm. it was, it was terrible. And we still, we still see those out there. I mean, every once in a while you'll see a puff quilt or a tied quilt that will come that really is kind of comfy and cozy when you feel it. But when you're quilting all those stitches, you can't do it. And you can't. we didn't have, I don't remember having a walking foot back then. Oh, no. What no in the world? No walking foot, uh, uh, you know. No. And so you're trying to sew through this. Well, huge, yeah. Big yeah. It was, and everybody yeah. hand quilted when it, I a mean, lot. it was, mm -hmm. it was really kind of when you didn't hand quilt, you were looked down on. Yeah. It was not, you it were, was You not. had the plague if you, did. exactly. if you didn't hand quilt, you oh. were, oh, mm -hmm. that's not really quilt. No. And nobody wanted you in the show with, no. a, with a machine mm -hmm. quilted uh, no, quilt horrible. because yeah, it was like you took the shortcut. And you didn't do it right. And and I liked hand quilting. I mean, I yeah. did a whole cloth quilt that was all hand quilted. Actually, I did it for my sister-in-law's. I was making it for her 25th wedding anniversary. And I ended up giving it to her daughter when she got married. Because I just, it took forever. It Those does. Things, it takes a you long, know, the, long time. All the way along and mm -hmm. all the blood from pricking mm -hmm. your fingers and everything. Mm -hmm. But I got, it was beautiful. I mean, I really liked it. And it was fun to do. So hand quilting was kind of the way to go. That's what we did. Right. Okay, rotary cutters. Rotary cut so I always used cardboard. You know, mm -hmm. you would draw around a square and you'd use your ruler and you'd get it all cut out. And pretty soon you'd have to get another one because you've, you know, bent the edges of that one. <laughs> and you used really sharp scissors and uh -huh. um, you drew on the fabric and then uh -huh. cut it out and all of that. For my birthday one time, my husband came home. He'd gone to this shop, and he thought he was really doing something great. And he brings me this rotary cutter and this ruler and this mat. And I'm like, what am I supposed to do with that? <laughs> <laughs> no idea. Yeah. What I he had just know. gifted me. I don't even <laughs> know how I learned about rotary cutters, honestly. I had to go I really take a don't class. Know. I'm sure I did. I mean, he yeah. brought it to me, and I was like, what is this? What and it was so this? sharp. Nothing was protected mm -mm. on him. You know, you no. just took your life in your hands when Absolutely. you, you know, hoped you had fingers at the end because we didn't know how to use it. It's amazing. And you know what Here's I would do? There's a razor blade on a stick. That's right. <laughs> Cut out your quilt. Yeah. And when I had mine, it was it was open. I remember I never shut it. You know, now we always we're so careful. Shut make it, sure you shut it. your blade. But mm -hmm. I went and grabbed my cutter and I cut all my fingers on the blade because I just picked it up. I, I mean, it was just. <laughs> You know, safety wasn't the same um, no. then as it is now. But no. anyway, rotary cutters were really important. Thread. What thread did you use when you first started quilting? Whatever you could buy at Walmart well, or yeah. Kmart. Or, or whatever was in your grandma's sewing grandma's basket. Staff that yeah. was so old that <laughs> rub the fuzzies off it <laughs> yeah. before you put it in. Yeah. <laughs> And then you'd go and you'd see like it'd have all these burrs and uh, along it and when you'd pull it through your needle at a break all the I think time. Most of it was like polyester because at that time they were well, all sewing true. double knit. That's you know? true. Yeah. So, so there was no hundred percent cotton I don't thread. Think so. I don't think so no. either. I mean, maybe the old spools and you know we'd have those old spools that had turned brown because, because <laughs> the labels were all <laughs> were all torn off of it, you know. And and you'd put it in there like that's good thread. We need to keep using that. And if you think about it, I went to a quilting class, one of my first quilting classes. Mm -hmm. And the teacher said, her name was Pat Abbott, A1 Quilting in Springfield, Illinois. And she was amazing. She used to be a teacher. And then she ended up uh, opening a quilt shop when she retired. And she was like, use good thread. It's the most, it, it is actually your cheapest thing that you are buying. Whatever it is, your fabric, you want good stuff. But she said, you want good thread to make sure that you've got something that Absolutely. is not going to break. Yes. And so that I kind of learned that from her and I quit using all that old and stuff. And now we're really picky about our thread. Yeah, we really are. We really are. And they all have different, you know, different, have re things, yeah, you, different things you use.
And if you don't use it for the right thing, a lot of times you do struggle. I have an embroidery machine and I didn't use the right needle with my embroidery thread and I was having a heck of a time. I'm going to tell on Peggy now because Peggy yesterday was trying to. She's on our board sew, of directors, yeah, Peggy. Peggy. Peggy was uh, trying to sew <clears throat> her binding on. And I said, what kind of thread is this? Because it kept shredding. It was embroidery thread. Yeah, see? I was like, no, you can't use that. Yeah. And <laughs> so, who knew that, yeah. that you had to be so careful with that kind of yeah, stuff? Yeah, you do. And you I had a whole, thread. I looked through my sewing needles that I, you know, how they're on sale or whatever and you buy them. And I had, I had tons. I had way too many. They were all leather mm-hmm. needles. What? I've never sewn leather in my whole life. I don't know why. I don't know. Maybe you got know. them on sale. Yeah. It's something. Oh, look, needles. Oh, needles. Yeah, <laughs> they're the needles. blue pack. You know, they're the ones I use, and they were leather needles. So right. anyway, we have to do that. And then templates. Patty talked about templates. Yeah, templates. I remember Pat Abbott, the lady that taught me, she told us to go get x-ray film oh, from wow. the, um, the hospital. And you use that, and you would cut, and she'd make us cut. We had to mark everything with a pencil. And then she'd have us cut it out with our scissors. And then we had to feel the edge. And if there was any kind of a bump, we had to shave it off to make sure that we had it exactly right. And we had our, you know, template cutting scissors mm-hmm. along with our fabric scissors. And we'd do that. And and then people would mark the quilt pattern on the outside with a pencil that never Absolutely. came off. Yeah. So you had a beautiful quilt with a pattern on it with all this pencil all over it. And that always kind of bugged me mm-hmm. a little bit. I, mm-hmm. I remember seeing yeah. one that was, it was a raffle quilt in a store window and it was all these beautiful cobweb looks on there and they were all pencil on the white and I thought it kind of distracted. They used but. to make little rubber um, erasers. Oh, that that's you could right. could use to get the pencil that's off. That's right. Because we didn't have all the great yeah. marking no. stuff that we have I now. forgot about that. Yeah. yeah, there was an eraser that you could take it off. Yeah, there was a little rubber Probably eraser. Probably should have told them to do that. If anyone has that quilt out there, you can do that. The rubber eraser. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so that's kind of cool. And then fabrics. Fabrics were so limited. If you look at that quilt that I did mm-hmm. on the Way Back When podcast, I needed lights and darks for the log cabin quilt. And so I did it when calicos were just coming out. And I didn't know that That's log cabins. Yeah, I didn't know Calico. log cabins has light and, had light and dark sides to it. So you could see what I chose were not appropriate. But I had to use a gingham in one. I had to use a solid in one. I had to use a light when it was supposed to be a dark green because they didn't have any more. They had like a little tiny bit. And this was so furrow fabric. So it was a big place. Oh, yeah, that, yeah. But it was just coming out and I really wanted to make a quilt. So. And back then it was more about making your own clothes yes. than it was quilting. It's, it, right. So that was huge. And quilting, the quilting section yeah. was nothing. nothing. And it was all polyester and cotton all mixed up. You didn't, they didn't really yeah. differentiate. No. So then people started saying, well, you can find out if it's, polyester if you light the corner on fire and <laughs> going to so pro with your little lighter <laughs> oh polyester it's smoking instead of burning like, you know, get that so, lady out. That's, right. <laughs> that's what we were told you light the corner on fire and that's how you can tell <laughs> what it's made out of so anyway Quilting has come a long so way since easier. we got started. It's so much easier. And that's why we try and encourage quilters. We want people to do it. We have just talked about how both of us agree with the fact that quilting is a total body experience. It is. It is not just cutting fabric and sewing seams, like I say, every single time. There is so much more to it, and that's why we love it so much. Patty was talking about just when we deal with all sorts of life issues. You get anxious. And and what's our solace? We go to the sewing room. Go to the room. sewing room. Yeah, that's the thing that we do. When we have something that really is troubling, I can't think of a better place to go, to and, go. and kind yes. of work it out. Mm-hmm. And so it, there's so many things involved. You get involved. involved in what you're doing, and mm-hmm. you're not thinking about whatever it is that was bothering you. Yeah. And you just, yeah. That's so totally true. And you true. get, if you mess up, you get mad at the fabric. You're no longer thinking <laughs> yeah. about what you were upset yeah. about before. Or mad at the designer when yeah. the designer screws up. Who you wrote know? these directions? <laughs> yeah. If I wrote them, I would have done this. You know, <laughs> you know kind of thing. Yeah. Just, the designer so feels relaxing. bad, though, when they do that. Yeah, they do. <laughs> do and they're anxious yeah and then they're anxious so yeah but but that whole experience when when the pandemic was going on patty and jane and i would get together and so yeah we'd zoom we just zoom so and sometimes we don't ever talk about a whole lot we were just visiting but just to have that camaraderie that quilting brings to people Mm -hmm. i mean i know that we didn't feel so alone right and i know in the olden days they that's women would get together and do that as well it was functional for them because they had to make stuff, but they still chatted while they right. were doing it. Mm-hmm. And we do the same thing. And that was kind of the thing of the night owl quilting is just everybody to get together and talk. Yeah, and, so. and so, and yeah, and we've done a lot of that. Mm-hmm. We do that when we have our blanket days with Project Linus. When we have our retreat, we've got a retreat coming up. June. Yeah, talk about that a minute. June 18th. Yeah. Um, 19th, 20th, and 21st. 
It'll be in Kansas City, mm-hmm. up by the airport, and we have 100 people can sign up. So it's fun. It's going to be great. It's so we fun. so much fun. Mm-hmm. And again, we learn just all sorts of things. We have people that come in and speak to us and inspire us, and then we are inspired by each other just getting together. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, we take a bus to Missouri Star Quilt Company. Oh, yeah, Missouri Star Quilt Company. Yeah. That is so fun. And it's and, right there. And we have a fun bus, and then we have Patty's bus. So <laughs> yeah. Pick, yeah, and then that. they have those of us that drive in the car because yeah. we don't want to be on either one because we yeah. get nauseous. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We just so, have so much fun. There's a lot of options there when we go. Yeah. So, anyway, but we just really enjoy that. So, it, again, the, the whole body experience is it's something when, when we sew together for some reason, cutting that fabric and sewing it together and coming up with like these beautiful blocks and things. I just, I've been working on a pattern that I'm going to show at the Night Owl quilting coming up. Uh, but I don't know if you're familiar with Anita Grossman Solomon. But she's a quilter. She comes up with all kinds of fun ways to put quilts together that like quick ways to make blocks that are a little more difficult. And so this is the block that we're going to work on. And it's so fun. And I spoke with her and she was so kind when I asked her if it was okay to do this. And she looked at my videos that we'd done previously and she was just very encouraging. And I'm so grateful for that. But she was like, yes, absolutely. So we're going to just get together and sew this together. And I'll give you my tips on how to put it together in a, in a, in and a quick and easy way. And you learned this week, just putting it together. I did. Yeah. And I did have, there were a few things that, that I realized as I was doing it that made it even a little bit better for my quilting experience that I'll share with you. Mm-hmm. So that's coming up. Keep that in mind. But I thank Anita for being so kind to let us do that and giving us that support or giving me that support. So anyway. I want uh, to show my Scrappy books. Oh, look at here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now talk about. Yeah. So Scrappy Song with Patty is something that I do with Project Linus, and I do it one night a month. But like, these are our quilt as you go blocks. Look at this. They're already quilted. Isn't they, that beautiful? Quilted, and then I'm going to teach them how to put them together. And this is purely scraps. This is something somebody threw away. Where do they go to sign up for that? They go to our website, www.projectlinus.org. Click on Scrappy Sewing with Patty at the bottom of the page. Look at that. And she does, Patty is a master at scrappy quilting. So This is you, what I love to do. You know, she has so many different ideas that you can, uh, look at this. Uh, and the quilt as you go is huge right now. People don't always have the ability yeah. to quilt on a long arm or to quilt on their home machine. Mm-hmm. And to be able to do it in a small space is really good. I do good. know how to make regular quilts too. Oh, <laughs> and this is, okay. And this is, this, this is the, is, um, that. is this pattern. Yeah. But this is our, our ghost pattern. It's called a booty full Halloween quilt. And if you go to the website, the pattern is there. And then this, this one. This is Christmas fabric. This was in our Santa satchel. This was the pattern that was designed by Bitsy Rogers. Mm-hmm. It was in Santa satchel. This is a takeoff of it. The bootyful mm-hmm. Halloween yeah. quilt is. So anyway, Patty put this together in, I don't know, 10 minutes. Okay. No. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> yeah, she does. Anyway, it looks beautiful. And yeah. she did a great job. And it's so versatile because you use 10 inch squares and you can do basically Just anything you want. Just check the size. This was a huge issue that we had. We had several layer cake and honey buns that we were. The pre cuts. The pre cut so fabrics. Hey, they're pre cut. They didn't measure accurately. They were off a lot. It wasn't just a little, a, a lot. A quarter of an it inch. It was a quarter of an inch on. When you're talking an inch and a half strip and you're a quarter of an inch off, that's, that's huge. Yeah, that makes that makes for a difficult quilting And my experience. squares were, my 10 inch squares were 10 and a quarter. Yeah. So a pre-cut that was supposed to save her time yeah, actually so had to be all cut because got, of that. You've so. got these cut 10 inches and then you've got a 10 and a quarter inch square that's mm-hmm. a problem. That is an issue. You know, you so don't you want to do that. So you have to trim them down. So make sure mm-hmm. you measure them before yep. you start using Yeah, them. it's really important yeah, that you do that. So mm-hmm. anyway, so thank you all for joining us. We're so excited. Thank you, Patty, for, for being here. Me. It was so Appreciate fun. It. And uh, we got to get back to quilting. So we have a lot. We have a lot on our list right now. And, and we, we got two to, more days to go. We yeah, got, and we have a lot got, to do. We've got a lot to do. So <laughs> thank you, everyone. And we will see you for our next Night Owl Quilting, which is two weeks from uh, September 25th. So I don't have the date in front of me, whatever that is. And again, that's when we're going to be doing our our luggage tags and and chatting again. And so I am always trying to be joyful, but I for sure will always be merry. Thank you so much for being here and we will talk to you again.